What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of U4 Code Kiosk Rosé of the Recapture. This is episode seven, and with me, as always, I have Blues Paid. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm really hoping for a better second half for this show after that, I don't know, the rock. Ro- I mean, I, we're, we're technically, like, at the halfway point. Yeah, uh, where we are. Series. Um, I, I mean, we, we do finally get some amount of backstory for uh, for Ash Phoenix for the first time. I mean, we kind of we yeah. got hints of that um, during the conversation between Ash and uh, Nara talking about their past history with Nor- Norlin, but it looks like we're, we are finally getting um, some more details about that. So, what happens in, is that uh, Ro- Rose or Sakia goes to the same orphanage that uh, both both Nara and a- Ash used to live well, at. I, I think we should also mention that before this, too, there is a scene with uh, Sakuya's sister encountering the um, uh, w- one of the uh, one of the Britannian. I forget his name. One uh, of the Britannian I, I think it's uh, Wal- Walter. That, yeah. That so name. so apparently we find out that he was actually the knight of, I think, their mother, uh, Sherry, and that he's like, I guess, technically he's he's actually loyal to Jozo Sumeragi. Uh, so he's, I guess, just been working sort of. Uh, uh, like I guess undercover or behind the scenes or something. I don't think he um, was really working undercover because I I don't think he was or, really aware of. Um, oh yeah, he did, yeah he didn't know that who she was. Or, yeah. Or, um, yeah. Just for, for clarification, is that so- Sakura is not uh, Sakia's sister? Is she's just her um, I, I, I de- identical like a, a decoy? So she she wouldn't yeah. really have much of a like uh, you know a m- much of a like a claim to the throne technically yeah because that he was like kind of like getting on her for that like oh you're just a decoy or something uh so but then he also says that you know i guess he he's going to try to help her Um, yeah yeah just mainly in in service to um you know to to saki his mother uh sherry Mm -hmm. i think he he kind of shares like some uh, some details like what, what was it? Um, what was it? Uh, Orange uh, when when he used to serve uh, Lelouch's mother at the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Because of course, as as soon as uh, Jeremiah learned that, it, that you know, like, uh, Lady Marianne was like you know Lelouch's mother, he, then he became completely loyal to Lelouch um, because of his relation to Marianne. Yeah, it's <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, so we go we go back to Rose uh, talk, talking to to the to the nun at at the the orphanage. Yeah, so she she Gios is the nun just to get her to I I guess tell pretty much just tell Ash's uh, life story basically. I mean, I just thought it was funny how the nun just like I I guess it would make sense that she would know maybe like some details about who he is, but it seemed like she just knew everything about him. Yeah, just um, like the entire detail. Like un- unless I I be I'm surprised that like Ash would even give like that, you know, amount of details to to the nun. Like if you know, if you know, if, if you know, if he like gone back to her about that. But it's just like it's yeah. yeah it just seems weird that this you know this nun really knew you know the entire detail of what what happened with with Ash during his time with Norland. Yeah, even like you know his escape from prison and him like befriending Josie Moragi and all that. Yeah. So, and of course, uh, not not only you know was uh, Ash friends with uh, Nara, but he also had a a, a, a little younger brother. Um, I think it was the name is uh, Nicole. So um, they they both get adapt adopted uh, by Norland. But of course, Norland uh, wanted to wanted to immediately get rid of um, you know the younger brother because uh, he he was sick at the time. But uh, Ash uh, tries to plead. Uh, to, you know, to let uh, let his brother live, like um, you know, just pretty much like you know, uh, to let him stay around for a little bit longer, uh, while uh, Norland reluctantly obliges. So we we see just like uh, like just like how hard of a life Ash has been going through, like you know, soon after that, basically just being trained as uh, as a child soldier assass- assassin. Yeah. Um- I, I I feel like they were kind of, in a way, it, it kind of seemed a little bit like uh, some parts of it did remind me of like you know what they did with Rolo in the original series, um, but you know as, as opposed to like you know with Rolo he was just, 
I guess he had never had a sibling and he just kind of like, you know, wanted, uh, uh, was looking for like some kind of familial love, it seemed. Um, but it's not really the case with, you know, Ash, of course. Uh, but yeah, he's just being, it, it, there's just kind of him being trained as a child soldier. Uh, we're not really sure what exactly he's doing. I guess he's, uh, eliminating like maybe important, you know, political figures that are opposed to whatever Norland is trying to do. Uh, Norland and his group of, of Britannian remnants, uh, th- he's just going on these different missions, just eliminating these people that are, I supposedly opposed to him. Um, and meanwhile, his brother is, I guess, you know, residing at the, uh, at the orphanage there. Uh, and, you know, and we get, we also see the, uh, I forget his name, but the scientist that's kind of, uh, torturing people. Uh, yeah, I think, he's, uh, he's yeah, training with, uh, with Ash. Um, I, I think it was like, a, what was it? C- um, a scissorman. That's what his name is. <laughs> yes. A scissorman. Um, yeah, we see him. And of course we find out that, uh, um, that, that I guess, uh, some of the people he knew from the orphanage are there too. Uh, or well, that I guess he befriends at the orphanage, uh, are, you know, part of Norland's group. Uh, but yeah, like we basically like that's, you know, the gist of it is that he was, you know, working for Norland at one point and, uh, and then, like, his brother eventually uh, decides to try to, I guess, help him in one of his missions. And, like, he, sh- uh, I, I he think, shoots, like... Yeah, I think uh, he was more or less forced into uh, joining the mission with Ash. Was he? I, can't, I, I It seemed like he just showed up and, um, and like, shot this girl that was, uh, I guess, that he knew at the orphanage. Like, he's... Because uh, she recognizes Ash and then his brother comes and, and like, you know, shoots, uh, pretty much shoots her in the head. Uh, and, you know, alerting the entire, like, uh, I guess the entire compound. So, uh, they end up like blowing it up. Yeah. And of course the, the mission was deemed a failure. And while Ash initially tried to take the blame himself, um, Nicole, like pretty much stepped in and took the blame, uh, instead, which of course resulted in him getting, getting killed by Norland soon afterwards, uh, which of course, uh, enrages Ash to the point where he wants to kill Norlin, but he was held back by Scissorman um, and gets, uh, and, and of course soon afterwards gets imprisoned uh, in, in the same prison where uh, Jugo Sumeragi is staying at. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, this is the scene where they they basically like get to know about each other like Jugo just talks about basically just talks about him uh, like, you know, who he is or introduces himself to Ash and and talks about a little bit about like his daughters, um, and I guess the Britannian guard that imprisoned them there. I guess is because we find out later. Because I was like kind of confused as to like why he was being so nice to Jugo Sumeragi, but I guess it's because he uh, he like owed him for something he did for him in the past. Um, so he's just like that, that's why I guess he's giving him like kind of or he's sort of like friendly with him. Um, but yeah, like we basically like. Uh, um, you know, he, he gives, uh, well, yeah, like he talks a little bit about, uh, Saki is Sumeragi and like, he, I guess he, he, like, I think later on he sees a picture of her. Um, but yeah, like, I guess then they, they find out like, what was it like their, their execution had been like, like moved up or something, or they were going to, cause they were, I guess, going to event- be executed anyway. Um, uh, but, uh, then, you know, the Britannian guard tries to help them escape. Because I guess, you know, they're, uh, I guess, you know, they were going to be executed. Um, but the, I, I guess, uh, they end up alerting the base, like the Britannians catch on to what they're doing. Uh, the Britannian guard that, that was trying to help them out gets shot. And, uh, the guy that shoots them, like th- this scene, like kind of made, didn't really make a lot of sense to me because what happens is there's a, um, I don't know if he had a name or anything, but there's a Britannian that shoots um, shoots the the Britannian guard that was keep that uh, was trying to help them escape. Uh, but there's also uh, somebody who's I guess positioned somewhere like a sniper or something, or but he's using like an assault rifle. Uh, he's positioned somewhere, and it's not really clear. I guess um, the the guy with the pistol like shoots him, and the uh, Jugo Sumeragi and Ash like go out to to the body, 
and I guess not really noticing that, that you know there was there was like a sniper or somebody like waiting for them, uh, and then they get confronted by the the guy that just shot um, Jugo or not Jugo the uh, the the guard, and basically like uh, they uh, they tr- well I guess they try to run from him, but then you know Jugo gets shot by the guy who was who just shot the uh, uh, the Britannian guard. He got shot multiple times, and you know, of course, there's the scene with him like telling Ash to try to, I guess, you know, to like protect his daughter, or like Ash promising he's going to protect his daughter, and he has, just gets the picture of Sakuya, uh, and then like uh, Ash, I, I guess, you know, Ash tries to get away by like outrunning the bullets, kind of like almost like Suzaku does in the original series, um, and uh, he ends up getting away, uh, but. The thing that didn't make sense to me was like I wasn't really sure, um, like who, the, like what was the point of Jugo getting shot by that one guy? I guess positioned somewhere else and then getting shot by the um, I, I I can't remember his name, but the uh, the Britannian guard with the pistol, like he could have just shot him in the head the whole time. I don't, I don't uh, know. It's just a, a lot of vil- villainous monologuing of sorts. It it's. Yeah, because it was it was also stupid because like while they were having this conversation, like Jugo telling basically like telling Ash to try to protect his daughter, like it, it was it was just like the 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 guy that just shot um shot the guard that was helping them out like was just standing like right there, and I guess he just was letting them have the conversation without just like killing the both of them. Yeah, he, um, it it just allowed allowed Ash to enough time to escape from from the prison itself. Yeah, well. Um, well, at the same time, Jugo also had this remote control, which allowed um, the gate to open, uh, allowing Ash to escape. And, and of course, he, he sealed the gates even afterwards, so uh, none of the Britannian guards in the prison will will pursue him uh, at you know at that time. So, so eventually, like you know, Jugo eventually gets shot uh, multiple times before getting shot in the head, uh, head you know, for good measure. Yeah, I mean that that seemed kind of stupid to me too because I was like, are, are they just trying to like, like you know maybe like torture him or something? They shoot him and and just have him die slowly, but then you know he's just like, uh, could you just kill me quickly and make it painless or something like that? Yeah, and you know the guard just obliges. So I was like, oh okay, I guess I guess they were gonna kill him anyway. So I, I don't know. It seemed it, it was just a really weird scene because I was wondering what the point was of the other gunman if you already had that guy who was you know already there and get to shoot all of them like he was he was pretty he, he wasn't a far you know like a long distance away from them or anything like he was right right there yeah like it seemed like he was maybe like five to ten feet away uh like the whole time so i don't know it was just like it, it's yeah it, it did make a lot of sense i was like okay <laughs> uh, yeah so eventually ash uh, re- returns to the orphanage and he pr- pretty much breaks down and recounts what happened to the nun to the nun there and and of course, um, you know that. Uh, and of course, uh, Sakia, of course, uh, realizes that um, that she's been using Ash unintentionally because of uh, because she because she she used her gios to to have um, Ash, uh, I guess, being tricked into re- realizing that uh, Sakia is his brother. Yeah, yeah, I guess because you know she was she was under the impression she had actually that he had actually murdered. Um, murder her father, murder Jugo. Um, but yeah, of course she, she uh, realizes. I, I guess she, uh, she, yeah, she realizes like, um, oh, I've I've done something terrible because I've tried to uh, to gios him into you know following me or, or convincing him that he's my brother. It, it, it's kind of funny because he would have, yeah, he like she said he would have done it anyway. Like he never, she never had to gios him into into convincing him to do it. Um, so. I don't know. I, I was like, yeah, I, I mean, I guess that, you know, yeah, you could see that as definitely that's, that's kind of a bad thing, but like, yeah, he would have done it anyway. Yeah. Um, I feel, yeah, I feel like they're trying to sort of compare like in a way, like Rose's, I guess, quote unquote sins to like Lelouch's in a sense, but what Lelouch did was, what was, was it's not even comparable uh, because Lelouch, like, like he says, you have to get your hands dirty if you want to, you know, change the world or whatever. And, you know, he, he did 
uh, he did so many things that are really just unforgivable. Like I, I don't think that what Sakuya has done is is even in the same universe as what Lelouch did in the original series. Yeah, so, I mean she um, she feels she feels bad for what ha- what she did to to Ash. I mean if she if she knew the truth before then she wouldn't have done you know she wouldn't have geesed him in the first place. But yeah, uh, so it, she she decides to like to try to to you know to, to to talk to ash to t- tell him the whole truth but of course she gets confronted by um by scissorman and the other britannians uh that are out out there to capture her and they they of course they they wear helmets to prevent her from uh using her uh her geos against them so she gets taken into custody and then of course um the japanese resistance are um uh, immediately ta- taken by surprise by you know by by a britannian attack force yeah, and the end of the episode is just, you know, we see her imprisoned. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I did kind of already spoil myself as to some things that are going to happen later. So, um, I mean, I, I'm I'm curious as to how it will play out. I mean, it I will say it was, like, what I saw of what would happen later was, I think it would have been a little bit better had um, it, it been the case that Ash wasn't really trying to help her and you know maybe she was or you know he he you know he was a villain or something it would have been more interesting in that sense like if he broke the eos or something but that's not you know as as we learn in this episode that's not really the case so i mean it, it's probably more so going to be that she, ash is going to try to help her escape or something and he's just going to uh try to i guess pretend to to be against her when that's not really what he's doing so i i don't know um i i mean yeah, so far this series, I, I've just honestly, like, I've really made it no secret. I've been kind of just underwhelmed by it, you know, especially it being a Code Geass anime. Um, it's it's just, you know, you, you kind of, it feels like you have certain expectations with it being attached to Code Geass. And I, I just feel like, you know, this, honestly, like, it's been the, the weakest thing I've seen from the Code Geass, you know, from what I've seen, I guess, of the, uh, of, I guess, the spinoff Code Geass stuff, like, which is the only other thing we have of that is, you know, the... Uh, Akito the Exiled, and we also have, like, uh, the other stuff, like, Nodley in Wonderland, which I haven't really seen a lot of that, um, so I can't really speak for that, but uh, th- this has just been, like, the most underwhelming thing I've seen from Code Geass, as, I guess, as a franchise. Yeah, um, I mean, what what I have to wonder is if this is if this is going to really lead into anything, um, e- either, like, they'll do a continuation with a Lelouch's storyline uh, alongside C2 wanting to um, to look for the the, the Gios temples and how, how they're going to end up dealing with them. And yeah. not, not to mention that there was a little, um, I guess, a little plot device involving the Gios order uh, within Akito, but it was never involved at that point. So I don't know if like they'll end up bringing that up or just completely I, forget about it. And, I mean, yeah, I wonder if that's why they have Akito and Layla becoming involved. I mean, I guess, yeah, it's spoilers of what might happen later, but yeah, they do show up uh, as we've seen from, you know, because the, the Japanese movies uh, are, of course, ahead of what's happening in the uh, in the U.S. version of this, which has just been edited into a, a series of episodes. Um, so, you know, we know, we kind of already know what certain characters are going to show up later. Um but we just don't really know what their the point of them showing up is or what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, it's they're, they're trying to follow up on something, you know, you know that was, I you know, I mean, many of you people view it on high regard, you know, at the end of you know the original series, and then uh, of course they they brought in they brought decided to bring Lelouch back, uh, for the well you know the Lelouch of the Resurrection, um, movie. Which of course I and um, I don't think uh, many people really know, but Johnny Young Bosch, who of course uh, voices Lelouch, uh, kind of publicly criticized uh, the decision to bring Lelouch back because he he really felt like you know Lelouch's ending you know was pretty fitting. But I mean, like this, despite that, like you know he felt like you know like he he really think uh, you know Johnny really felt like you know he you know that. I don't know. He, he kind of did have mixed feelings on that. That's that's where I'm pretty much going to leave it off. On, yeah. On there. Yeah. I, I didn't even know about that. But I mean, I do, I do at least respect like people like Johnny for that is that they like Johnny at least seems like so at least some of the series he's involved with. He actually is like a fan of some of those series like Bleach, for instance. Like he was really like he was one of the people who was really trying to get the thousand year blood war to happen. 
um, because I guess like he, you know, he, he really likes bleach. So, you know, he, he really wanted that to be a thing. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know about that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of in agreement with him though. Like I, 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 it was definitely unnecessary for, for uh, code Geass to really continue in the, in the way that it has. Um, and really they had to literally bring Lelouch back from the dead in order for the series to even continue in the first place. Um, I, I mean, one of the things I liked about the original series is that it has such a conclusive ending and it wraps a lot of things up pretty nicely. Like there's not really much reason for it to continue. I, I feel like it could potentially continue in, in a spinoff, you know, with other spinoffs like Aikido, like that makes sense. You know, because that, like I said, there was a, a gap in between season one and two where we didn't really know what Lelouch was up to. Um, so, I mean, that, that kind of explains that. Um, but, you know, it, it's just like they really need an excuse for the conflict to continue. And that's why uh, Rose is, is happening the way it is, is because, you know, there there needs to be some kind of a conflict. And I mean, the, my my issue is that it just needs to make sense within the universe. Um, and I just feel like with Rose, it just doesn't. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, guys, uh, so that all being said, uh, until next time, we will see you all later.